Hamabe is like uh, the most important thing of my life. The emotions are so strong. It's a fantastic supporter, Sweden's best supporter. You go there because your passion for the club. It's just part of what you do and what you are. We always knew that we had like the potential to be what we are today. It doesn't matter if it's three hours drive or it's 15 hours drive, you will go there. The fan base matters, we are the club. I skipped everything to be able to follow the team. I love to see football, I love my club and uh, that means everything for me. I don't give a fuck what people say. I, I'm not normal. <laughs> Hammarby has more of a family feel. It's easy for people to feel for Hammarby, even if they are not a Hammarby fan. I think you, you made a really good point about the club when we talked before the interview, uh, how important the availability and the hospitality is. So you feel very, well, very welcome here in Stockholm to Hammarby. And I, I think that goes for most of people who come here. The tradition of the club is like a working class club from, from the beginning. Södermalm has always been a part of, historically seen, been the part of Stockholm that was the most working class area. It was a place there where you dumped everything you didn't want to have in the other parts of the city. And Hammarby as a club has always been extremely closely connected with Södermalm in a way that is, it's quite rare, I think, to have such a strong connection. <laughs> A Hammarby person is someone that takes life easy. Yes, it can be hard, it can be tough, but you can always laugh at it, you can smile at it, they're always friends, you can always go have a beer, and tomorrow is another game, or tomorrow is another job. The political things, I think it destroys between the supporter groups. I know there is right-wing supporters in Hammarby, there's left-wing, there's people that probably don't care about politics anyway. So, let's go for Hammarby. Doesn't matter who you are, everybody's welcome. In Hammarby, we sort of have uh, the politics stay outside the arena. If you are a Hammarbyer, you are all right. It doesn't matter what you are, what you believe in. If you are there and love Hammarby and seek for Hammarby, then that's what it's all about. And it's for the club, it's for the colours. I don't want the Nazi flag, I don't want the Che Guevara flag, I don't want the gay flag or whatever. It's Hammarby. Hammarby, everybody's welcome. So, nothing more to say. Hammarby is the only main thing. That's the important thing. That's what brings us together. No politics. I think it's a, a very deep tradition in Hammarby to stand up for the club uh, even though it's not winning. If you look at uh, how well the team have performed and how many supporters there's been watching the games, the lines doesn't add up together. Even though we had a couple of years that was so bad that we almost got expelled from the second league we still had a growing attendance. It's like a family when, when uh, you have something bad happening to the family, people come together. There are two words in Swedish. One is called medgångs supporter, which is the worst thing you can be. I think you said it was called fair weather supporter. The ones who only turn up when the team, the club is good, doing great. And in Hammarby we coined the phrase motgångs supporter, bad weather. The ones who are there when it goes against you. And I think we have actually prove that we are very good at this. It doesn't matter if you won 20 titles, we'll still be there. Last year we had an average of 20,000 something. We had an average of uh, over 20,000 people uh, when we were in the second division last year. For the whole league we had one third of the whole attendance. Everyone knows that we, when we come to a stadium we will sing for 95 minutes plus. That's what we do. We come there, we support the team and we make the best out of it. Where we stand, give or take like 10 meters, this is where the singing began in Sweden. They started to, to stand together and sing songs together, like from the first uh, Swedish stand uh, in the autumn of 1970. There was just uh, passionate people that watched the uh, English football because I think the first live broadcast was uh, Wolverhampton 1970 and uh, I think they saw the, um, the atmosphere and wanted to create something like that. These are people who it matters to them and it matters for real. And the section was called E1. E1. Uh, we also have an Ultras uh, group that is named after it now. It's a really nice gesture that they named the group after this place.
Hammarby is not the club of winning tradition. We've only won the league once in 2001. But that was like uh, the, the best day of my life. 2001, of course, is the, the greatest day in the club history. That moment, I remember it when, uh, when we had like about maybe six, seven hundred supporters here three days before that game. If we win against our at home, we will be the champion, you know. And there was only thinking about the game. When the referee blowed, the game was finished. What I remember was that the supporters really run into the field, was crying in front of me. That is, that is a moment that I never will forget, actually. Everyone knows Kennedy is Kennedy. There's no, no more than one Kennedy that's worth mentioning in Sweden. Kennedy, what a person. He's the same since he came for the club. Even if he was professional, he was a millionaire. He's such a big heart, this lad. It was a fantastic moment for me to come to Hammarby when I was 70 years old. And I, I felt like I have a great future to do something nice here. He was important for the team and he scored important goals. Shortly after, like two or three years after that, he went to Ajax. When we were absolute shit, we were in the second division. He came back. I couldn't believe when it happened. So actually, my mind was still to play in Europe, to play in Spain or, or other countries still. Uh, but in the last moment, I felt like I'm going to come back. I'm going to do my best to get Hammarby where, where Hammarby needs to be. He was signed here uh, at this ground and the supporters actually climbed uh, up on that roof to actually be able to see when Kennedy had a press conference and signed. To see the supporters, uh, some supporters to cry in front of me, you know, to see me back in, in Hammarby was actually the most nice moment for me. He was a big part of us coming back. I said to myself when I wake up, I said like this day, no one gonna stop me and the team. We're gonna, we're gonna win this game. And this is the moment to get back in where Hammarby needs to be back. I get the first chance, I missed penalty. And then I said to myself, can't be like this. I scored a free kick. Then the celebration was so so great. And then I get we get another penalty. And I said to myself, I'm gonna get a revenge against the keeper. I'm gonna score. And I scored 2-0. Then I felt like the game is over. You know, we're gonna win the game. And then the three and the four and the five came. You know, and uh, yeah, the celebration was amazing. You know. <laughs> We moved Arena two years ago now. We were at Söder Stadion and we were capped like every game. It was uh, 10,011. Like that was every game. It was 10,011. We knew that we could have so much more people coming in if we had a bigger stadium. We left Söder Stadion two years ago in the summer of 2013, in the middle of the season. And it was uh, horrifying. Everyone was crying. It was like a funeral. Everyone was like, I don't want to leave. Like this is where I grew up. This is where uh, like I met my friends, where I met my wife. This is where you found everything that you stand for. Right here, I used to sit when I was six, seven, eight years old and just look, uh, looking up on the stand. It was hard for a lot of people. So the stadium has been like a church or a home uh, for many of us. We had like stickers and graffiti and uh, pictures all over the place. It was green and white, and it was we were the only one playing there. And then we moved to, to a like, super modern uh, spaceship, which uh, we share with another team, which are, is our main rivals. If you had asked me that three or four years ago, I would have said the new arena is too big for us. I wanted the arena that took 18,000, maybe 22 or something. 31 is much too big. And now it's not big enough for us. But it's been uh, better than I, than I expected. That could have been a disaster, but it has on the opposite strengthened us. Är det en ljudvolym som blir väldigt bra? Akustiken inne i arenan är fantastiskt bra. Så då betyder det att supportrar och fans då har chans att påverka ljudvolymen inne på arenan och då blir det 12 spel. Hammarby is part of my identity and just seeing the, the colours of green and white make me happy. It doesn't have to be connected with a Hammarby game, it's something, it's so deeply 
inside me. It was a religion to me because I was part of something that was bigger than myself. I knew that I con could contribute to this and all this uh, that was happening. It doesn't matter what I do, it's still bigger than who I are, are or what I do. But I can still contribute to something that makes a difference for everyone. It's like a safe place. You know, when uh, it doesn't matter what happens in life, you can always go to the games. In a way, I compare it to a religion. Religion gives us a lot of fulfillment and a lot of parts of our lives that we need. And I get most of that when I go to Hammarby Games. There is the singing, there is the being part of a community. Uh, it gives me a, a structure to life. I build up all my life around the club. I cancel family life and everything like that. I only do this because I, I, I really love it. I have had periods in my life when I've, I have tried stop, but I realize it, it means too much to me and it's too big a part of what I am. Football is a language. Football supporters have a language and we, we can understand each other because it doesn't matter what team you support. Even the worst rival is the same as you and we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for them. This is where I want to be for the rest of my life.